Good morning, everybody. Welcome here. I'm glad to see you all here and smiley faces. Uh, just want to let you guys know, i got a little bit of announcements. Um, if you're visiting, uh, or, or even if you've been here for a while and you don't, we don't have your information, there are the connection cards behind the seats. Um, leave it in the offering box at the back of the sanctuary. Um, if you have any kind of prayer needs or anything like that, please write it down. There's, there's uh, on the back side of the connection card. We just consider it a uh, privilege to be able to pray for each and every one of you. Um, there's three Bible studies going on right now. Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, it's on the book of Romans with Buzz. Women's Bible study with Pastor Marcella. Um, won't be meeting this week, but they'll meet next week. And that is on a Wednesday. Um, there's also a brown bag Bible study at the Kingdom Campus office on Thursdays at 1210. Um, there's an adult Sunday school class that meets at 9, and Mark Ball is leading it. Uh, it's from the book of Revelations. There is a Solid Rock Bible Camp. It starts on Monday, July 25th, runs through Friday for the kids that completed grades 3 through 6. The camp is which is held at Camp Aldridge. Uh, it's run by Roland and Deanna Broder. It runs for five days. They'll have lots of exciting activities, um, swimming, great food, Bible lessons, singing, uh, great speakers, and it's an opportunity for kids to meet a lot of new friends and, of course, uh, learn more about God. Uh, the following week, they'll have f grades 5 through 8, and that'll be August 1 through the 5th. There is brochures available at the, wec available at the Welcome Center, and if you register by tomorrow, you get a, 10%, a $10 discount. If you have any questions, you can ask Candy Murphy or Lori Jacobs. Um, Hope, Hope for the City, Saturday, July 30th at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. People can come and get free groceries, backpacks, school supplies, haircuts, medical checks. Um, there's a bike clinic, car seats, games, inflatables for kids, uh, free hot dogs, and a lot more. Um, please let your friends and family know it's an opportunity for um, the community to to do great things for everybody and uh, we also need ver uh, volunteers and that's it I just want to thank you all for being here today morning church it's good to be in the house with you guys this morning amen would you stand with us for worship Marcella was praying with the worship team in the back and she said one simple thing it's all about him it's not about us and so when we come into the house of the Lord I know sometimes we come to receive but really we come to lift him up right and in, and in lifting him up he brings us healing he brings us what we need doesn't he so we're another acoustic morning this morning, so. Ready? Be glorified this morning, Lord. We thank you. We come to worship your name this morning. Be lifted up. We stand and lift up our hands. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. Together we sing. Everyone sing. 
plugged in so you want me to switch the battery a little bit technical difficulties go up from here, right? <laughs> yes, everybody awake now? <laughs> All right. Okay, I know this is going to take a minute, but I have to put my strap back on, otherwise I'm going to be dropping this thing. <laughs> it's not about us, it's about him. It's what we just said. Sometimes we get caught up in making things so perfect, and it's like, nothing's perfect. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Be glorified this morning in all that we do. Amen. Amen.
move at the sound of my voice so give me dust eyes give me undistracted devotion for only you give me dust eyes give me undistracted devotion
Yes. Woo. <laughs> Is it good now? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Yes, we can praise him today. Maybe it's still fog. Maybe you still cannot understand. But yes, you can praise him today. Um, I don't know if Virginia is back here already, but uh, I want to let her know how made me happy to see her worshiping with her family. Because our family, it's so precious before God. He's not calling one person. He's calling your family. He's calling families. And he promised us, if you trust in the Lord, if you surrender before Jesus, he will save you and your household. So our God is a God of families. Our God is praised when we serve our families, when we love our families, when we forgive our families, when we pay the price for our families, when we fight for our families, when we stand for our families. Amen? So it's beautiful to see. God is here. And the psalmist told that I rejoice when they told me, let's go to the house of the Lord. So yes, we can celebrate today. We can be glad today because through his spirit, we can worship him today. Maybe you are here and you do not feel worthy to be in the presence of God. And I will tell you, Nobody is, but Jesus paid the price. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, we can stand before God. We can serve him. We can worship him. Nobody is worthy, but Jesus made a way. Jesus paid the price, okay? So that we can celebrate, we can rejoice. I encourage you. To seek his face today. Because guess what church? God has nothing to do with your need. He has not, nothing to do with your pain. With your disease. He has nothing to do with your brokenness. He won't answer your need. But he will answer your seek, your search. Sometimes we mix up in our minds and we think, well, God knows everything. So God knows what I need before I say this is true. But he won't answer your need because you have a need. He will answer you when you seek his face. And in our minds, somehow we think, well, God already knows. He already knows what I need. So I don't need to pray. I don't need to seek his face. I don't need to tell him. I don't need to surrender. I'm just going to the church. I'm going to take my seat. And I'm going to just wait. I'm going to just wait. To listen. To listen for some music. To listen to the pastor preaching. We need to seek his face. When you seek his face. He will come. And bring whatever you need. You will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open. So I will tell you again, God has nothing to do with your need. He didn't cause that in your life. Stop blaming God. Because he didn't cause that in your life. All the struggles, all the pain, all the tears are consequences of sin. Marcella, but I didn't sin. But for sure somebody else sinned and you are paying the price. Is it fair? No, it's not fair. That's why Jesus died on the cross. To deliver us from the power of sin. So when I tell you. He has nothing to do with your need. He won't answer you because you have a need. He will answer you when you seek his face. When you call upon his name. So change your heart. 
stop blaming God because something is not going well. I, you know, I heard, I heard people telling me, Marcella, I won't pray because God gave me this trouble. God gave me this struggle. I said, no, you are wrong. He didn't give you any pain. It's exactly because of your pain that he paid the price. It's exactly to release you from this burden that he died on the cross. But you need to seek his face because he will answer when you seek. He will answer when you search for him first of all. Amen. So let's pray. So God, our Father, the maker of heaven and earth. Lord, you are merciful. Lord, you know our hearts. So we pray today, Lord, come and examine our hearts. See, Lord, our anxieties. See, Lord, what's inside our hearts. And if there is anything hindering your presence to come, Lord, just cleanse our hearts. Holy Spirit, have your way among us. Jesus, we know that you are walking among us exactly now. And yes, Lord, I don't want to preach like you are not in the room. I know that you are here. I know that you are touching hearts. I know that those who surrender before you those who seek your face those who seek your presence they will be healed they will be delivered they will receive joy they will receive the miracle jesus you didn't give us any pain no lord you came exactly to make us free to release us from the pain, to release us from the burdens. Jesus, help us to set our eyes on you, to set our sight on you, Lord, knowing that our Redeemer is alive, knowing that in you we have peace, in you we have a way. Lord, come. Take your throne in this place. Let us rejoice in your presence, Lord. Let us be glad in your presence, Lord. Let us celebrate in this morning because we are free in this blessed country. We are free in America to worship you and we celebrate you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. Let's go to the word of God. Lord, I thank you for your precious word. Open your Bible with me, 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. We're going to read, and after that, I want to explain something for you. 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Do we have there the screen? The king Azariah reigns in Judah. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, became king. He was 16 years old when he, he became king. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jecolai of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Except that the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense in the high place. Thank you, Lord. Except that he was doing everything right. Except that something. I'm here to tell you today, church, that it's not enough doing things right. We need to stop doing what's wrong. 
He was doing everything right, but he didn't stop doing what was wrong. Let's go to the background of this story, and then you can understand. The king Azariah was a descendant of David, the King David. You know King David, known as a man after God's heart. King David was filled with the Holy Spirit. King David loved God. King David brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. King David restored the worship in Jerusalem. King David was in peace, rest in peace. And then his son, King Solomon, start reigning. King Solomon was reigning, and then King Solomon start being influenced by his wives. My God, he had 700 of them. 700 of them. And he was influenced by them. They used to worship false idols, false, false gods. They were idolizers. And guess what? King Solomon didn't care. There's no problem. I'm worshiping my God and way. So there's no problem. You guys, you can build altars for false gods. You guys, you can do whatever you want to do. So King Solomon didn't take position. And sometimes the not taking position is a position. That's why the title for my sermon today is Take Position. Take your position in God. Because somehow you want to just be in peace with everybody. You just want to be okay. And this is not wrong. Jesus taught us that we need to be peacemakers. But sometimes you need to take position. And King Solomon allowed his, his wives, 700, most of them were princes daughters of kings so for sure they were really spoiled girls princess so king solomon didn't want to tell them no here in this holy ground you won't worship false idols here in this holy ground god gave us this ground god guided us to this ground so here you won't worship false idols. But no, he didn't do that. And he began to fall. So after that, God raised Jeremiah, the great prophet. Do you know Jeremiah? And then God raised Jeremiah to keep telling those people, hey, stop with a divided heart. You shouldn't be with your heart divided between gods. We have only one God, and you go and serve him. Because if you do not serve the Lord, if you do not worship the Lord, you know, guess what? You're going to be slave. If you do not worship the Lord, Babylon will come. If you do not surrender before God, you are surrendering before sin. And when you surrender before sin, Soon or later, you will be a slave. Because Jesus told us those who practice sin, they are a slave of sin. So it starts with something so small. Because pleasure gives us, sin gives us pleasure. Sin gives us pleasure. So it's good. It's pleasant to sin. But we start sinning. We start sinning. And then we become a slave of that sin. So when we go to the Bible, when we go to the scriptures, and God is guiding us, he's telling us, keep your hearts. And actually, he's not telling about the organ, our hearts, but telling about our minds. Keep your mind safe. Protect your mind and know when to take position. No, hear not. Not in my house. Not in my home, not in my family. We need to take position. And then Jeremiah, open your Bible with me, Jeremiah chapter 10. 
Are you with me, church? Can you understand this background? Azariah was reigning, and Azariah was a descendant of King David. King David was doing everything right. But then Solomon began to doing things wrong, his wives. And then Azariah was reigning now in that divided country. People were worshiping God and people were worshiping false idols. And he began, he, Azariah began to do things right. But he didn't break the false altars. He didn't break, he didn't give up the, wo- the wrong worship. He allowed that. So he did everything right except that he remained doing what was wrong. And sometimes, church, we, we are doing things right. We are coming to church. We are giving back our titles. Let me make a break. I used to say I give back my title. I give back my offerings. Because when you bring your title to church, you are not giving anything to God. You are giving back to God. God doesn't need your tithe. You need blessings in your financial life. God doesn't need your money, but you need blessings. And Malachi says that when we tithe, we open a heavenly portal on our houses, and the blessings will come. Okay? I decided to make this talk. Maybe somebody needs to listen to that, because all the time I'm going to tell you, I give back my title, because doesn't belong to me. We are stewards. We are administrators. We are managers. Amen? We are managers. So I'm not giving anything to God. I'm just giving back what he asks me because he gives me everything. Everything that I have comes from him. So I just give back. Anyway, maybe you are doing everything right. You are coming to church. You are giving back your tithes. You accomplish your agenda, but you are still allowing that small thing to reign in your home, in your heart. You are still allowing that small part in your heart, in the altar of your heart, to worship false idols, false gods. How I know that I'm worshiping a false god? Who is guiding your decisions? Who is guiding your your decision? It's your God. If the money is guiding your decision, so money is your God. If popularity is guiding your decision, so this is your God. If fear of man is guiding your decision, so this is your God. Worshiping false gods means... I'm worshiping, I'm trusting, I'm obeying something that it's not God, our God. We need to worship our God. We need to trust on him alone. We need to obey him. But somehow in our lives, things just start to come. And then we start to obey different things. We start to trust different things. We start to trust in the strength of our arms, in our intelligence. And then we begin to make our decisions by that. Who guides your decisions? This is your God. Amen? So maybe I'm talking about Walt altars. I'm talking about high places. And you think that this is something from the Old Testament. What is this pastor, Marcella, preaching about the Old Testament? It's the Word of God. doesn't matter if it's Old or New Testament. It's all the Word of God. And we can always apply in our lives. So those high places you can bring to your life today is your heart. Is your heart divided? Jerusalem was divided. Jerusalem was worshiping God and worshiping false gods. Jerusalem had the temple, beautiful, with the chairs, with everything. 
but also Jerusalem had the high places where the idolizers used to go to worship, to sacrifice to their idols. Is your heart divided? Is your heart today worshiping the Lord? Is your heart holding a throne, only one throne, throne for Jesus? So anyway, then Jeremiah came. And Jeremiah, God used Jeremiah to speak against idolatry in Judah. And Jeremiah told in chapter 10, verse 12, Jeremiah was telling about God. He said, he has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. And he has stretched out the heavens at his discretion. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. And he causes the vapor to ascend from the ends of the earth. And he makes lightning for rain. And he brings the wind out of his treasures. Everyone is dull-hearted without knowledge. Every metal smith is put to shame by an image. For his molded image is falsehood. And there is no breath in them. They are filled to a work of errors. In the time of their punishment, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the maker of all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Let me tell you something. Jeremiah began to compare, hey, why are you surrender before an idol? Our God is the maker of all things. And you are trusting a God handmade. You are trusting a God who man's metal is made, made. So Jeremiah was just trying to explain to them how our God is the maker of all things. How our God made rain. How our God sent rain and bring the fruits from the earth. Where is your heart today? Are you trusting in handmade things? Are you trusting in things that your eyes can see? Are you trusting in things around you that you can touch? Because this is exactly what Jeremiah was preaching, what he was speaking. Trust in the Lord and do not allow. Take position and do not allow the altar in your heart to be divided. Because in the day of the, the, the last day, they will be punished. What is that? They will be disappointed. So this is important. To know that we can trust in our Lord. We can trust in him with all, all our hearts. He can provide you. He can go before you. But those people, they want to find something else for them to do. You don't need to do anything else. Your efforts would never buy God. You just need to surrender before him and wait on his perfect time. Wait on him. Wait until him to come. Pastor Troy used to say always, wait on the details. He will give you the details. But we don't want to wait on his time. We want to pray and yep, that's it. Dow prayer, download, download the prayer instantaneously. Wait on his perfect time. He sees you. He's taking care of you. Do not allow your heart to be divided between false and worldly things. Just trust in your Lord. He's taking care of you. He's opening that door. 
He's changing the circumstances. He is breaking the chain. But I started this service reminding you he won't answer your need, but he will answer your search. Keep seeking his face. Keep surrendering before him. Keep worshiping him. Keep allowing God to renew your mind, to teach you. Jeremiah was preaching and he was so upset about what was going on in Jerusalem. And he kept telling, be careful, be aware, wake up, Babylon is coming, you will be slavery, slaves, slavery is coming, you won't be free anymore, please. Stop giving space to the enemy in your life. Stop because God, only God can give you freedom. Only God can satisfy your mind. Stop playing with fire because soon or later, slavery comes for those who worship false idols, who put their trust in false idols. So Jeremiah was just trying to, to, avoid, to, to warn them about that. But he also told, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, curses the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit in parched places, in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out his roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Seems so easy to make our decision because it's the opposite. One thing it's so good and another thing it's so dry, it's so horrible. And yes, it's exactly this. God told us, you are free to choose today, life or death. You are completely free to choose, but why it's so hard to choose life? Why it's so hard? Because we are flesh. And our flesh doesn't want to obey. Our flesh doesn't want to God. Our spirits long for God. And then the Holy Spirit comes to the life for those who surrender before Jesus. When you surrender before Jesus and you acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, you can resist sin. You can resist to worship false gods. And you can surrender. And then finally, you can be like that tree planted by water. So it's not about, it's not about things that's happening around you, but it's about your decision. Anybody, anything has the power to put you down except you. Anybody, any country, any government, anything has the power to break you, to put you down except your decisions. God is always putting before us. Choose today who you want to serve. 
choose today. But Marcella, I'm doing what's right. I'm coming to church. I'm, I'm listening to the word. So now the next step is stop doing what's wrong. We don't know by ourselves. Who is going to tell you? Pastor Marcella is going to, or Pastor Joy is going to sit with you and tell you what's wrong? No. The Holy Spirit will start telling you. Jesus' presence will start, will start revealing to you. Jesus came to forgive our sins. Jesus came to give us salvation. salvation and Jesus came to reveal our hearts. You know why it's so hard to listen in Jesus' word? Because it's kind of mirror. He takes a mirror and put in front of us. And we can see us exactly how we are. And we don't like that. We like to hide things. We don't like to, we don't like anybody telling us that we are wrong. I, I get you. I understand that. We don't like people telling us that we need to change something. But it's exactly what Jesus do. He does with love. And he comes and reveals our hearts. He shows us the dirty places, the, the, the dark rooms in our hearts. And then he tells me, hey, if you want, I can bring some light. But do you open the door? Because if you open the door, I can bring some light to this dark room. But you need to open the door. You need to allow him to come. You need to tell Jesus, come and bring light to the dark rooms in my heart. Jesus, come and show me, Lord, what I still need to do. Jesus, come, because I want to be like that tree planted by the river, by the waters. I want to be like that tree that the roots go to the water and they do not fear when the heat comes. They do not fear the drought. They do not fear because they are linked to the waters. They are linked to the pure waters. So it doesn't matter if the drought it's all around. They still have leaf, green leaves, because they are rooted in the pure waters. Amen. I don't know if you are with me here, church, but I'm preaching what the Lord asked me to preach. I'm preaching that it's not enough to do what's right. We need to stop doing what's wrong. And only Jesus can tell us what is still, what still needs to be fixed in our lives. I tell our lives because I'm not different than you. We are all the same. We are all in the same page. We are all seeking for more, more and more. Amen. So I'm going to close with this. Open your Bible, Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 21. If indeed you have heard him, him who? Jesus. So if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in your spirit and your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak true with your neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole is still no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. 
Let no corrupt words proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that, is, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, pay attention, church, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking and put away from you with all malice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because you are. Oh, there's something more. And be kind to one another, tender heart, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Praise Jesus. Did you get that, church? Changing of life. He who was lying, do not lie anymore. He who used to give space to anger, do not do that anymore. He, was, he who was using evil words, do not use that evil words anymore. He who was carrying bitterness and anger and raw and evil speaking, do not do that. Just be kind to one another and tender heart forgiving one another even when do not, they do not ask you for forgiveness. How can we do that, church? Only through Jesus. How can we change our lives like that? Only through the Holy Spirit. Step by step, day after day, by seeking his presence. Because it's not enough to do what's right. We need to put away the wrong things. We need to cleanse our lives. We need to take position. And we need to declare, Lord, now it's time to build my life in you. Now, Lord, now, Jesus, it's time to allow only you to reign in my heart. Allow only you to take position in my life. Amen. So Jesus died in the cross to give you new life. Not only to forgive your sins, not only to give you salvation, but also to change your life in this earth. To change you completely, to restore your mind. Worship him, please, if you can come forward. So do not, do not think that Jesus died on the cross to give you a religion. No, he died on the cross to cleanse your heart. He died on the cross to give you new life. Today we're going to celebrate communion. And maybe it's a perfect moment for you to stand before God and declare, Lord, come and help me. Lord, come and cleanse my heart. Help me to do what's right. Help me to stop doing what's wrong. Lord, I don't want to lie anymore. I don't want to steal anymore. I don't want to betray anymore. I don't want to surrender before addiction anymore. I don't want to be a slavery of my sin anymore. I want to ask you to raise your hands if you need your cup for communion tonight. You have a place with your name in Jesus' table. You don't need to be a member in this church to have communion. You are a member in the body of Jesus Christ. He invites you. He honors you. He loves you. So if you do not have the cup, raise your hand and somebody will bring the cup for you. Because we can celebrate communion. We can tell Jesus, your sacrifice is enough. We're going to celebrate, Lord, the cross. We're going to celebrate forgiveness. And Lord, we're going to celebrate the new life. Because you died on the cross to give us new life. Abundantly life. You died on the cross, Jesus, to change our heart. From liars to honest people. Those who speak truth. 
those who are kind, tender heart, those who carry the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Oh, maybe you are here and you no, not with me, never with me. I know it's humanly impossible, but nothing is impossible for God. He changed the stony heart and He gives you a new heart in Jesus. He changes you. He touches your mouth. He did with Isaiah. Isaiah came before God and said, God, forgive me. I can't preach your word. I can't, I can't be right before you, Lord, because do you know what? I speak evil things. I curse. And then God took a goat and touched his mouth and healed his mouth and replaced his life. It's not impossible for our God. Let's celebrate communion now. Do I have my? Thank you, sister. We are the body of Christ. Do you understand? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ, in the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. He took the bread and he said, this is my body, which I give. He gave his body because he knew that without that sacrifice, we couldn't be. We couldn't be in the presence of the Lord. And this is true. We are not worthy. We couldn't be in the presence of the Lord without the cross. He made us a way. A brand new way. A holy way. Through His sacrifice. And He died on the cross to forgive our sins. He died on the cross to give us salvation. But He died on the cross to change our hearts. To cleanse our hearts. To forgive the iniquities in our hearts. Do you know what iniquity is, church? Iniquity, it's the sin inside our hearts. Dwelling in our hearts. Iniquity is when I'm thinking about sin. Maybe you don't do anything wrong. But your heart is so contaminated. And Jesus told us, give up malice. Give up malice. But Marcel, I cannot stop thinking all those evil things. It's stronger than me. Without knowing, without wanting, my thoughts are so contaminated. And the bad thoughts, the evil thoughts come. Seek his face today. He is here. He is walking here. If you seek his face, he will touch you. He will transform your heart. He will transform your mind. Jesus is here. And then he said, this is my body. Examine your hearts today, church. Do not take the body of Jesus in vain. Understand that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Make sure that your heart has only one God. Make sure that you surrender your life before Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for the cross. You can eat the bread now.
the same way he took the cup and he said this is my blood with this blood I seal the new and eternal covenant with you you don't need to sacrifice animals anymore because I am the perfect lamb of the Lord you don't need to sacrifice animals anymore to cleanse your sins because I decide to pour out my blood my perfect blood my holy blood my pure blood to washes you so Jesus took the cup and he said this is my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant that I make with you Jesus wants to make a covenant with you. Jesus wants to reign in your hearts alone, alone. You don't need to create high places in your heart where you still obey false gods, where you still trust in false gods where you still surrender obeying anything besides God because he paid the price thank you Jesus you can drink Thank you. 
yes, Jesus, wash our eyes so that we can see your majesty. Wash our eyes so that we can see that only you is trustworthy. Only you, Lord, is trustworthy. Only you deserves our worship. Only you deserves our obedience. So yes, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see. Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for this service. Thank you, Jesus, because we worship your holy name here today. We lift your name high. We love your sweet presence, Lord. But I pray now, Lord, that your presence, the sweetness of your presence, the holiness of your presence, the unexplainable peace of your presence be with everybody here. Lord, I pray that when they leave this place, they will carry more and more and more of your presence. Lord, your Holy Spirit be with them so that the Holy Spirit will increase the sense of your presence. Because we know, Lord, that you are in everywhere. But Lord, sometimes we are so heavy hearted. We are so busy, Jesus, that we do not realize how close you are. I pray that everybody here will sense your presence, Lord, like never before. Because you are God. You love us. And you are willing for an intense relationship with us. May the Lord bless you, church. May the Lord shine his face upon you. Be gracious and kind to you. And give you peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.